Hi everyone, my name is Kimmy Thomas. Uh, I am from New Orleans, Louisiana. I have the pleasure of serving three great organizations as president and CEO of IGL Foundation, Independent Gaming League, and Game Heads. My education and job, job training, uh, you'll look and see it, does, it really does not match with what I do right now. I graduated from Xavier University with a political science and microbiology degree. I graduated from Southern University Law Center, so I have my Juris Doctorate as well. I have many certifications in FEMA training and Homeland Security, uh, and I am in gaming. Just giving you a, a kind of a, a overview of what we do, uh, we work with STEM. Uh, we, are, we actually train students to embody different pieces in um, STEM so that they can, co they can utilize that in career development. So career development, we try to make sure that every person that touches IGL has a legacy plan. What does that mean? We allow them to use tech, connect that with the community and the gaming and the playing and the competing with also your personal career goals. We want it to be seamless. And so that's why our mission is learn, compete, play. <clears throat> why did I decide to work in STEM? Um, STEM chose me. I actually never really anticipated on doing this. Uh, my brother, who was the founder of all three entities, actually was the guru in everything STEM. He knew everything about gaming, the tournaments, the connection that esports made as far as the community went. And he learned that there was a way to connect young kids as young as in sixth and seventh grade to getting them on the path of a career uh, of a career of their choice. So no longer are you leaving high school trying to decide, well, what do I want to do and only have options? You then let the career path, you tailor that experience towards um, your, your information, the knowledge that we give you, you tailor that and then you select. So that way you're not kind of lost out there. So some encouraging words that I can give to anyone. Where you are now is not where you will be 30 years from now. So with that being said, said learn, be open to learning. Be open to understanding. Be that person that is that career hacker. Figure out those pieces that you like in different careers and tailor it to meet your needs. Whatever excites you because you want to have a career pathway that every single day you wake up, you love it. You don't want to have a job that you just go and serve, but every single day you love it. And that's how you go ahead and figure out what career is best for you. Thanks again. I'm Kimmy Thomas with IGL Foundation, Independent Gaming League, and Game Heads. Hi, my name is Michelle Jackson, and I am the owner of PR Solutions, a strategic marketing and corporate event planning company right here in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm originally from Birmingham, Alabama, and I love tech. I'm the executive director of the IMVETS National Youth Business Competition, where I work with youth all over the country to help them to start viable businesses. I am also the host of this event, and I'm so excited to be here because I think tech and STEM and STEAM are very important so that we can build strong workforces right here in New Orleans. I am someone who came from a working class family. I grew up in public housing. I know how hard it is to pull yourself out of a tough situation. But I taught myself how to do digital marketing and now I do social media marketing, I do email marketing, web design, and so many other things based on using technology. So this little tool right here, which I know all of you have, is how I do 50 to 60% of my work. And so I encourage you to Stay with us today to learn about tech and to seek a great fan position in technology. Hi, I'm Teresa Jones, but you can call me the Cyber Lady. I'm from a small town called New Sarpy, Louisiana. That's right, I'm not even from Duskerhan. I'm from the town next door that's four streets long. I have a very unconventional pathway to technology. 
I own two technology companies. One's a cyber company named Evolve IQ, and the other one's an IT company named Next Tech Solutions. I have a pathway of not finishing college. However, taking my hustle, determination, and self-education and using AOL, because there was no Google in my time, how I made it to where I am. I encourage each and every one of you to follow your dreams, don't take no for an answer, and you believe in yourself, and you can do anything you put your mind to. Thanks for joining me. I'm the Cyber Lady. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cedric Dent. I am uh, excited to join you all and connect with you all virtually. Sorry, everybody, we had some technical difficulties. Um, so sorry about that. We're going to get started with our panel and bring on Desiree so that I'm going to be a part of this panel. So I guess I'll stay on the screen this time. Um, we, I know, I know. I don't know what happened. I feel bad because that was Cedric Dent. I wanted everybody to meet him, and I'm hoping that he's here with us today. But Cedric is one of our path fakers, and uh, he's an author. Uh, he's only, I think he's only 20 years old. He's authored a book. He is a grad student at LSU, and I'm just so proud to know him. So hopefully he will be a part of one of our panels today. Um, not sure what happened with the video, but we'll get that situated. But for now, we're going to get started with our What I Can Be panel and invite on our guests. Sweet. Greetings, greetings. Hello. 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 So Hello. I have a real excitement over this one, Michelle, because I kind of call this sisters in STEM, really. Okay, Ooh. we can really get to the nitty gritty of what's Great going time. on. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So I believe in, in all of your cases, and I know Dr. Dr. Treve is joining us, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let her come on through when she's able to. There she so is. I'm here. I'm I'm just walking downtown a little bit. So I'm multitasking, y'all. That's the life of a scientist, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Awesome, awesome ladies. So the obvious first question for you is to talk to us a little bit and to the entire audience about your decision to go into the arena that you're in. Obviously, we know statistically that women are underrepresented. And when we think about black and brown women, it's even smaller. Talk to us about for you, what was it that first got you interested and kept you in this industry? I mean, I'll go first. I mean, technically, I have a background in sales and marketing, and I got tired of working for other people. So I decided, you know, I wanted to be a pharmaceutical rep because that's like the end game of being in sales. And of course, when I realized I was going to be a drug dealer, it was like, mm, it didn't really sit well with me. <laughs> so I started working for an IT company. Well, no, first I started selling medical software, medical uh, EMR systems. And I recognized everywhere I went, there was no one that looked like me. Um, everyone knew who Teresa Jones was, and it was only because I was the only black woman. So I was at a conference and it was like 1900 people and there were only 17 people of color and I was the only woman. And I was just like, okay. And then everybody wanted to know, well, who's your boss? And I'm like, now, hold on, we got to fix this. Cause the first thing you asked me is who my boss is, who you, how you don't know I'm the boss. So um, immediately me and all of my attitude decided, um, it's time for you to get back out and be in a business, be a business owner again, because I had a marketing firm years ago that flooded in Hurricane Isaac, but it was just the perfect timing. Um, and I, I don't regret it, not one bit, because now I get to help encourage others to want to be women of color in tech and see more of me instead of just me. <laughs> terrific. Terrific. Thank you, Teresa. Mm -hmm. Kimmy, you want to share with us a little bit? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> my pathway was a little bit non-traditional. I actually have a law degree and actually in, in, in going into law and into business and moving along, I started really uh, enjoying what I was doing with the gaming community. That gaming community is so diverse and it's so diverse, yet you still do not see uh, women of color that are leading that charge. And so 
uh, I, I started IGO Foundation, Independent Gaming League, and um, Game Heads with my brother. He was uh, the initial founder and really took that charge in going after gaming. And he was just kind of like, gosh, all these uh, pathways in the gaming industry need to be married with uh, um, the educational, where we, where we kind of uh, introduce people in education. So that way they know uh, I can start with gaming and move all the way into the careers that deal with gaming. You know, you're talking about your content creators, you, your graphic design, web design, event coordinators, and it's just, it's, it's limitless. And so that's kind of where we are with it. And, uh, and I apologize if, I, if I'm a, a second behind. I, I actually took some medication and it has me a little bit dreary, so. You're good, you're good, Kim, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I would like to add too. I'm sorry. You're fine. Keep going. Okay. So, um, you know, the idea of I'm having a pathway to success is just odd to hear that because I am someone who uh, I'm a writer. Uh, I've, I've been writing my whole life pretty much. I have a degree from uh, University of Alabama mm -hmm. in public relations and communications. Never really saw myself as someone in tech. And then I take on a role for the state of Maryland writing policy, and I find myself in an area where there is so much technology and everything was touching tech. So I'm sitting in meetings and I'm learning about um, cybersecurity and nanotechnology and biotechnology, and then I'm running divisions that's around technology. And I'm like, wow, there's such a connection between me as a writer and an innovator and an actual, you know, a developer of a, of a tech company or a startup. I mean, it's all innovation. It's all innovation. And so that has been, you know, my pathway was almost falling into it. So now that I have a PR firm and PR has changed so much, um, I call it 21st century PR. Now everything is about the internet, about social media. And um, I do so much of my work on my, my smartphone I try to mentor and teach people how to do that. I make money off of social media and doing digital marketing. And, you know, I don't even think I had an email address when I was in college. I mean, that tells you how old I am. I don't even think I had an email address. And so now, you know, all these things I've had to learn on my own. And you're talking about being the only woman and the only African-American in the room I can remember sitting in a room where we were developing the Cybersecurity Center of Excellence um, in Maryland, and I was the only African American woman at the table. And you know, you you can't help but to ask yourself, where are we? Where are we? And how? To, and if and, and we've got to get that path, get more people here. They need to be in that that particular room. Great, thank you, Michelle. Dr. Treatment. Okay, I'm gonna apologize for my background noise and advance. Like I said, I'm outside talking, but for me, what propelled me to continue with STEM, um, so I'm a first generation college grad, only one in my family that has a PhD. And, um, you know, when I got into chemistry, I always say chemistry found me and loved me um, because I never would have thought that I would be in a position that I am. So, what propelled me to keep going was when I started my STEM outreach, so, you know, doing like things that you just saw. The, uh, demos it was you know a little young brown girl that walked up to me at one of my chem demos and she holds out her hand to my face and she touches my face and she's like i have never met a scientist that looks like me I'm like are you real mm -hmm. so as you can imagine i'm like all right i gotta keep going because this is you know this is, i'm being that representation that you know they would like to see so you know you know just like my other co-panelists have just said, you know, we don't see enough of us. So, you know, I know that propels us to continue to reach to a higher height and just continue in the path that we've chosen because, you know, we're doing something, we're trailblazing, we are, um, you know, we're making a statement, we're being that representation that you don't get to see a lot. So that, that alone, because I can keep going, I'm not going to uh, hold up the time, <laughs> but that alone uh, definitely, you know, you know, it got me into it from one, it kept me and it continued to, you know, propel me to keep pushing forward and, you know, stay motivated in this particular profession I chose in chemistry. 
Terrific. Dr. Trevi, you made me think of something because, and, and I feel like, Teresa, you mentioned something to this point as well, because I could remember being in engineering school, there were basically four women and two of us were brown. I was the only American born brown. <laughs> and so, you know, you start to think of this. And for me, I remember one semester quitting, like literally saying, I'm going to try something else, but continuing. I wonder when we think about the entire ecosystem and this level of support, what is it that you guys would say, what do we need to say to teachers? What do we need to say to potential mentors? What do we need to say to those around us to really ensure that there are more like us that are gonna come behind? I mean, me personally, I might say something that'll get me in trouble, but we need to help uh, these teachers understand that everybody's not going to be a rapper or a singer. I don't want to be a stripper. Um, that it's okay to be a bookworm. It's okay to read. Um, it's okay to want to do something that everyone else is not doing. And, you know, people of color, we're more than just athletes and, and people that can put a mic in their hand. We're extremely bright, extremely intelligent people. And I would encourage educators all over the place to help show that in the classroom that we're bigger than just being on the stage at the Grammys this weekend and then and then playing at the NBA All-Star Weekend, that we are the people who are inventing elevators, we're inventing technology, we are, you know, I saw a young lady who put something together for NASA and she was a woman of color and she was like 20 years old and I was like, this girl's invention is going to be on on the Mars rover. I was so excited about that. Like we are doing things. We're doing things in the past, the present and in the future. And we need to be represented in that aspect because I mean, truthfully, I tell people all the time, my black is beautiful. And to me, there's nothing more important and more uh, encouraging in this life is being a young woman of color, being young, black and gifted. And you need to know that you are young, black and gifted. You just got to find out what that gift is and cultivate it. So true. Oh, so true. Thank you for that. Who else wants to talk about this? Because I do believe um, there are more platforms now, but even with more microphones, there's still not enough people stepping up to them. Yeah, so I will, I will definitely want to interject here. Um, so, you know, I always use that, you know, that mirror analogy, because it definitely took um, someone to hold that mirror up to me. So, you know, uh, I tell people in my story, you know, it took someone to hold up a mirror. And in that mirror, of course, I thought I hated the image, but it took my mentors to show me, like, nah, let us clear up this fog and help you to see what it is that we're seeing. Um, so, you know, in terms of the mentors, you need to have mentors that are out there because they definitely want to see you prosper and, you know, you know, want to elevate you to higher heights. And also having that diverse background so that they can kind of understand where these students, where these people are coming from. Because me, you know, look, I always say I'm a girl from 0805, honey. Like, you know, I didn't come from, you know, I didn't come from being school fed off the of silver school, you know. So it took people to, you know, definitely say, okay, girl, look, we gonna cultivate this because we see it. I didn't see it, but it definitely took those mentors to shape and mold. And so, you know, I always encourage, you know, those who are aspiring to be mentors or those who are like, we want to reach back into our communities and that's why Z, like, look, you got to hold up these years for these kids because if they can't see it, then they're not going to do it. I was one of them. So, you know, I encourage the mentors that are out there, you know, hold up those hey mirrors and start, you know, clearing that haze out the way so these kids can see that, yes, they too can be what it is whatever they say they want to be, you know, no matter what it is. And I know we're pushing, you know, STEM, but, you know, you got to follow your heart at the end of the day. So, you know, definitely being a mentor, holding up that mirror so those kids can see what it is that they are going to be. I want to add, too. That's that's excellent. Um, I think also the kids have, young people have to know they have options. You know, there are options and we have to meet them where they are. I have a 14 year old. And if I had to say anything to teachers, you know, and this bothers me so much, you know, as a parent is that, you know, every kid's not going to be a straight A student. OK, so don't write them off if they're making C. Um, meet them where they are. If they like gaming, then use that to educate them in, about careers. You know, there are careers in gaming. Of course, we know that. But a lot of our young people don't. 
Um, I was reading a study that showed that so many of our 13 to 15 year olds are still desiring or aspiring to be the same things that that the 15, the 13 to 15 year olds were being were desiring 20 years ago. Think about that. Oh, yeah. So 20 years ago, um, I want to be a doctor, a lawyer, a football player, and they're still saying the same things today with all the technology, with the small smartphones in their hand, the consoles at the house, the laptops, and they're still fighting to be the same things that probably actually 50 years ago was probably the same things they were aspiring to be. So that speaks to the fact that, you know, we're still not demystifying STEM and, and, and tech enough for our young people. And we're not putting it in a way that's digestible to them instead of just saying, oh, you can be, you know, you're going to be a robotic specialist, which is, you know, maybe tough to get to. Why not say, OK, I'm going to show you how to build mobile apps, you know, or I'm going to show you how to create a game or I'm going to show you how to be a whitehead hacker. Um, there's so many things you can do with tech and STEM and STEAM, but we have to meet the kids where they are and we can't be intimidated uh, by technology. That's one of the good things I think came out of COVID is that a lot of us had to get rid of these ideas that, you know, uh, technology is something negative because guess what? We're all now Zooming and, and, and using technology <laughs> every day. So we have to incorporate it in our lifestyles responsibly, but also if your kid likes the game, then Show them how they can turn that into a career. I mean, that's that's meeting them where they are instead of trying to get them to go after something that's probably far beyond where they really want to go. Awesome. So this is interesting. What I love about this conference is that it is obviously highlighting options, but not only options relative to traditional jobs and roles, but also how to literally beat your own path, carve out what it looks like for you. And Kimmy, Kimmy and Teresa, both of you have done that. Could you talk to us a little bit more about what that has meant for you? Meaning why the choice to carve out your own space versus the traditional role? And talk to us also about some of the challenges with doing it in that way. All right, I can speak a little bit to it. Um, in carving out your own space, especially in esports, you always take what you're good at. Um, I think the demystification, uh, you know, of career careers and options and things of that nature is breaking down these glass ceilings that our communities actually put up. You know, we put it up in in the school systems. We put it up in our families and things of that nature. And so, what we try to do is just question the norm. Wow, well, I wonder how is this sound coming out of of um, the computer, let's open it up. Mm -hmm. um, how, uh, if we're putting together a game, what type of uh, music goes behind it? You know, what's, what are some artists? What we try to do is constantly just challenge and question the, the kids and in challenging, <clears throat> excuse me, and challenging them and questioning them about everyday things, we show them, oh, here's something that you can get in right, right here. You really like the music? Can you make the music? What type of artist can you select that type of stuff? Breaking down small elements makes it relatable to the, the, the student. And making it relatable, that that after that point, we are creating the options and the opportunities in selecting the careers. Awesome. Thank you. Teresa? So like, as we were talking about earlier about what educators and, and what they can do in the classroom, um, I a person that probably never won. Um, growing up, I was that C student that they wrote off. But truthfully, I just I'm dumb and I ain't gonna talk to them. Um, so like I would do other things to keep me entertained. Um, I love video games. I still have my Super Nintendo. Uh, I still play Mario Kart when I'm stressed out. Play Pac-Man. Um, I was the, the teenager that bought that gateway computer that looked like a giant bubble. And I worked and I went cut grass and did all kinds of stuff to buy a computer at 16 years old. How I ended up with doing what I was doing, nobody had to cultivate it and say, hey, you love computers, you probably need to get into computers. My brother's a computer programmer and never thought to tell me, um, <laughs> you need to do something in computers. And then he tells me when I'm 35 years old, when I finally start getting into tech, 
oh, it's about time. And I was like, I'm about to go to jail. <laughs> you should have you told me like, how cool this was. Or, you know, so like for me personally, it was just a, a struggle going back and forth. You know, I stayed in the same industry doing sales and marketing. I mean, I didn't sell radio. I didn't have my own PR firm. I didn't, I've done digital marketing. I've done all kinds of stuff, sports and entertainment. You name it, I've done it. But I am very, very filled in doing this now. And it's back to what I loved from the beginning, a computer. I'm that, I was that person. I didn't want to take it apart because I don't get my nails dirty. But um, I'm fascinated by the things you can do with the computer and how it's constantly evolving. Like it, there's an evolution when it comes down to technology. And it's like, either you're going to get on the bandwagon or you're going to get left behind. So um, like I'm the person that went to college for pre-law in psychology. I don't use none of the stuff I ever did. <laughs> Uh, I, mean, I, want to say, I can use the psychology with the technicians when I'm like really trying to convince them to be nice to people on the phone. But truthfully, it was just this weird evolution of figuring out what it is I should have done the whole time. Awesome. Awesome. There's been an interesting thread throughout, I feel like, the whole day from the 15 white coats to the non-traditional paths panel that we had of other tech professionals to you ladies, where there is, um, there's been this resilience, especially amongst us, where we have identified our own bridges. We've identified our own mentors. I want to know what you are personally or professionally doing to again ensure that others are coming behind us. We talked about what should be done with teachers and others, but I want to know more about what you are doing moving forward. And of course, Michelle, it makes sense that you would kick this off because I know this is only one thing you're doing with this event, but talk to more, talk to us about other things you're doing. You know, I, I love innovators. Um, so five years ago, after working in, for econo in economic development and starting programs um, up north, I decided to start a youth entrepreneurship program called I Invest. And it is a competition for youth 13 to 19 years old. And I work with them and they're from all over the US and Canada. And I've got other countries interested in participating. And so the kids, we work with them for six months. Uh, we, we coach them. Um, Desiree is one of our coaches. They learn how to pitch, how to create a business. And these are all viable businesses. And these are some of the most intelligent young people. I mean, they're creating wearable technologies and apps and I mean, designing things that are that are so well liked and so well received until many of them have actually created companies that are in, in the market now and that are doing extremely well. So that's one of the things. I've also been doing more in the digital media, digital marketing. I've started an online community um, called Black Writers Workspace. I went from zero to almost 4,000 members in the course less than a year. Um, and so I've been using platforms like this to connect writers together. Um, and so, and, and just trying to, you know, I grew up in the projects, you know, I was the seven year old walking around who wanted to be everything. I mean, I remember like I wanted to be queen of the world. I was waiting for that title to be approved by somebody. I just had all these dreams and goals. I wanted to be a best-selling writer. I mean, author. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I didn't have a lot of mentors because everybody was working hard. I, I grew up in a great community, but they had their heads, heads down and they were working hard. And so, you know, it, it really was a hard lift for me to kind of get to where I wanted to go. Um, but I just wouldn't stop. And so now that I'm at this place, you know, I'm when I close my eyes, I'm still that seven-year-old little girl. And I want to make sure that other seven-year-old little girls like me or 12 year olds or 15 year old little girls know that they can do anything they set their minds to. So I'm going to, that's what I'm dedicating my life to. It's that. Incredible. Incredible. Thank you so much, Dr. Treva. Hey, so for me, again, I love STEM outreach. So anytime I can show how fun science can be, I am for it. So right now, um, you know, due to the state of the world again right now, I host virtual mini chemist series. So, uh, you know, I get kids from all over. Uh, they uh, video call in with me and, you know, I talk to their parents, let them know what uh, materials that they need to do the science experiments. So just like I saw previously, that is exactly what I do. Um, and, you know, I, I love it. So you see my excitement come out, their excitement come out. 
and it's just amazing. And it's been one of those things that, you know, parents always are thinking because they're like, you know, we don't know how to like really do this at home and just knowing the kids knowing that they're actually experimenting with a real scientist, you know, that's even more, you know, just, you know, outstanding, you know, for them. And then just to see the kids first, and they're like, oh my gosh, science is cool. And that's what I strive for, <laughs> you know, for that. Oh my gosh, you know, this is like awesome. So I'm like, you're going to be a scientist when you grow up, right? Sometimes I get like, yes, but sometimes I get like, nah, like I still want to be a singer. I'm like, okay, that is my part, right? <laughs> um, but even outside of that, um, you know, when we are able to go back to, you know, you know, normal, you know, I do go out um, to festivals and things of that nature because, you know, out here in New Orleans, we love us a good festival, right? So, you know, there's always something for kids to do. So, you know, I make sure I'm in that space where I can also do the outreach with them. Um, at work, I, you know, am one and only a uh, scientist that looks like myself. So one of the things that I also do is I reach into HBCU and make sure that I can get interns from those places um, to engage in the summer REUs that we have um, and just the different interns that are offered because Honestly, they don't even know that they exist, especially, you know, you know, I'm at NASA in Mississippi, so they don't even know that we exist sometimes. So, you know, so I make it a point to reach out like, hey, look, I want you to come work with me, work for me, you know, do X, Y, Z, because it's available to you. Like, this is government funding. Like, they paying you to come to research, like, come do it, right? So, you know, definitely that type of outreach and reaching back out into, commu into the community that way, that's one of the ways that I try to make sure that, you know, the next up and coming scientists can be on the road to where they too can, you know, just reach for their goals in that particular discipline and thrive. Excellent. Awesome. Awesome. Dr. Kimmy? Um, what we are doing next is we are moving to the University of New Orleans campus. And that's going to give uh, a lot of the elementary, middle school, and high school students an opportunity to not only do gaming in a, in a university environment, but also uh, we'll be teaching courses over there. Uh, and, and a lot of the courses that we'll be doing uh, will, allow, will lead them to certificates. So that way, not only are they leaving uh, with a portfolio or something in their portfolio, but a certificate to state that, hey, you've achieved something very, very great. And uh, with the University of New Orleans stamp on it. And so uh, it's about connecting those pathways, making sure that from a early uh, age standpoint, we're guiding, we're guiding and we're integrating. We're not isolating them. We're really just kind of pulling everyone together and saying, hey, these are some non-traditional career pathways and, and we want to not only educate the student, but educate their families on it. So that way it breaks those, con you know, those barriers. So Incredible. I think I said Dr. Kimmy. Maybe that's yeah. prophetic. I don't know, Kimmy. <laughs> Maybe that's down the line. <laughs> Look, he caught me off guard. <laughs> All right, Teresa, the cyber lady. So currently, um, I'm a firm believer in volunteering. So I volunteer and speak to high school students, college students, to give them a real perspective of what happens when you come out with an IT certification or with a degree. Um, I also do a lot when it comes down to trying to give them apprenticeships opportunities because everybody wants it an experienced tech. They don't want you just fresh out of college with, you know, two certifications and you've never opened up a computer. So we try to do things like that. And I'm also launching a new um, nonprofit that I'm going to be partnering with other organizations, of course, called Future Tech City Collaborative. And what it is, is to make sure, because I'm from, from the hood too, uh, my family from the Seven Ward, you know, literally from the Seven Ward. Um, <laughs> so we, um, I'm a firm believer to make the person whole. So like it's hard for a, per a kid to pay attention in school if they're hungry. It's hard to, you know, for somebody to pay attention to anything that they need to do, even as an adult, if if they're being abused or whatever they're going through at home. So I'm a firm believer that we got to make these people whole. So I'm trying to put together a facility where they can come and get whole and get technology educated and resources at the same time. Um, so it's going to be very interesting, um, but I, I always volunteer. I love volunteering and talking to young people about 
figuring out what it is you want to do and don't wait till you're 35 like I did to realize what you should have been doing all along. I love your honesty, Teresa, because I feel like we are in a time where obviously kids are exposed to a lot. There's a lot in front of them, but it's so important for them to understand the real, real that this is so much bigger than just the money that's on the other side, but it's also about what it takes to get there. And I love that all of you in your own way is just not just in the work you do, but also in the volunteer and the additional things you're doing alongside. You're teaching people what it is and what it takes. So that, that to me is incredible. One last thing, ladies, what is the one thing you wish you had known kind of think about your seven-year-old self. I think, Michelle, you talked about the seven-year-old self. What would you tell that seven-year-old self right now? Hmm. I would tell that seven-year-old self that, that Black women, that we're amazing. Uh, that, that you're going to grow into um, an environment and be exposed to other women who are doing amazing things. So never doubt yourself. Never fear, you know, tie that towel around your neck and jump off that couch the way you do when you're at seven years old. You don't know any better. Uh, keep doing that uh, because you don't want to you don't want to breed fear into what you're doing because you won't get to where you're going. And so I, that's what I would tell us to be to just be fearless. Great. Okay, I'm going to jump in here. Uh, okay. So for me, I would say seize every opportunity. So I grew up an only child, so I was super shy. I'm not shy anymore by any means, but I was super shy when I was a kid. So, you know, whenever, you know, study abroad opportunities would come up when I was in college and just whenever any other opportunity outside of school would come about, I would be too scared to take them. So I would definitely tell my younger self, don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. And definitely keep every opportunity that comes to you because you never know where those opportunities are going to lead you. I didn't start using opportunities until I got, um, you know, almost into my senior year of college. And, you know, though it wasn't technically too late, but I did realize that I missed out on a lot of other things that I probably could have, you know, had a chance to participate in if I was too scared to get out of my comfort zone. So, yes, yeah, so I would definitely say see every opportunity possible because you just never know where those opportunities are going to take you. Terrific. Thank you. I think uh, that seven-year-old self, I would probably say, follow the passion, not the money. Money will always come, you know, and if you follow your passion, you will, you will learn how to make money through your passion. So. Love that. Last but not least, Cyber Lady. <laughs> I would tell Lil Riri that, um, you're not limited. You're not limited by your skin color, that the fact that you were born a woman, you are not limited. All of those are more reasons for you to go and conquer the world. Do whatever it is you feel like doing because you can do it. Um, and I'm a firm believer, I'm crazy enough to believe I can do anything I put my mind to. And if I would have understood that at seven, uh, we would be in a different place right now. <laughs> Well, the great part, though, just like you mentioned, is that in all of our cases, it's um, and I think this was mentioned during one of the other panels. It's like you kind of have to get this new vision of how things are really going to happen for you. And so it's, it's a weird sense of acceptance and realizing how far along we all are. And, yeah, there's always more to go, but we're still just making sure that there are paths for others behind us. I've really enjoyed chatting with you ladies today. I know we are not out of information, but we're out of time. We've got another video coming up from cyber.org and then our last series of the day. So stick around. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you. Wow. I, I, can't even, I know that was so great. I, I, I can't wait to, you know, go back and, and review it and uh, put it out there on social media um, as a clip, because I think that it was powerful to see us all and um, doing different things in tech, but nonetheless.